Okay, uh, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. In this video what we're going to see is uh, that the set of all continuous functions on an interval AB, uh, so the set C um, AB, with a different metric on it, uh, it, it namely the um, integral metric uh, it is not a complete metric space i.e. that we can find a Cauchy sequence uh, of um, continuous functions on the interval a b uh, which are is a Cauchy sequence under this uh, other metric on this set uh, which is not going to converge to another uh, function within this set so it's not going to converge to another element of this metric space so CAB with a different metric, and the metric we're going to put on it uh, is going to be that the distance between a function f and a function g is going to be the integral from a to b of the modulus of f minus g dx. Now you might be wondering, why do I not need to specify um, exactly what uh, type of integral this is, i.e. whether it's a Riemann or a Lebesgue integral? And the reason is that um, if we uh, consider a picture here, here is the interval a, b, and both these functions f and g are defined on this interval a, b. So here is the interval, uh, the function f, and here is the function g. Then uh, both of them are continuous functions defined on the interval a, b. Otherwise, they would not be an element of this set c, a, b. Okay. Now, if I construct from this the modulus of f minus g, as I did in the uh, under when we were uh, considering the supremum metric on this set. Um, so if I uh, draw another picture here, this is the interval a, b, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take f, I'm going to subtract g off and take the modulus of it. Now in this case it's very simple because uh, g is always lower than f, so the value that g ascribes to any point uh, in the interval a, b is always less than uh, the value that f ascribes to that point. So f minus g is always going to be a positive number, so I don't need to worry about the modulus sign. So I'll get something that looks like, um, so it starts off quite low down here. Uh, and then it grows slightly, and then it sort of reaches a peak, and then sort of goes off like that. Something like that, basically. What I'm doing is uh, this, the height of this function here, so if I colour it in pink like that, is basically the difference between these two functions here. So if I colour it in on here as well, then hopefully that'll make nice sense. Okay, uh, so uh, basically if f and g are continuous functions, then f minus g is also a continuous function. And even if you take the modulus of f minus g, it's going to be a continuous function as well. Because all the modulus, remember, does is it takes anything that's negative and it flips it into the positive. So suppose we have some function that is f minus g on the interval a, b which does have a positive and a negative bit like this. So this is f minus g. In our case, f minus g was an entirely positive function on the interval a, b. Uh, but suppose we have a function where at some point f is bigger than g, and at other points f is smaller than g, resulting in f minus g being negative. Then when we take the modulus, all it's going to do is basically take this negative bit here. So I'll highlight it in yellow. It's going to take this negative bit here, and it's going to flip it in the um, x-axis and turn it into a positive bit like that. So it's still going to basically be a continuous function. Um, and remember, the intuitive notion of continuous is that uh, you can draw it without taking your pen off the paper. Um, so the fact that, you know, when, once you get here, it then is continuous on down here. It's still going to be continuous even if you flip that up in the x-axis, basically. So the modulus of f minus g is always going to be a continuous function. Um, if f and g are both continuous functions. Okay, uh, so uh, I was going to explain to you why do I not need to then specify whether it's a Riemann or Lebesgue integral, or there are other definitions of integration as well. Why do I not need to specify it? Well, the reason is that uh, continuous functions are both Riemann and Lebesgue integrable, uh, and the value of the Riemann integral of a continuous function is exactly the same as the value of a uh, the Lebesgue integral of a continuous function, of that same continuous function. Uh, so basically, we can just say the integral from a to b of the modulus of f minus g, because that 
that value does not depend on whether you choose your definition of integration to be the Riemann integral or whether you choose your definition of integration to be the Lebesgue integral. Uh, so that's why we can just say the integral from A to B of a continuous function f minus g. And this will always exist and it will be some finite value. And we've seen that before that this, uh, that using this as a metric, uh, basically, uh, it does obey the axioms of a metric space. So. Um, Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to ascribe uh, the distance between a function f and a function g to be this area, this area between them, basically. That's what it's going to do intuitively. Okay, right, uh, so we want to see why uh, this isn't a complete metric space. So I need to give you, uh, in order to prove that a metric space um, isn't a complete metric space, all I need to do is find you a Cauchy sequence of elements of that metric space, which then does not, does not uh, converge to an element within uh, the, um, doesn't converge to something within uh, the, um, the metric space. Okay, uh, so how am I going to do this then? Right, uh, so I'm wondering whether to make A and B concrete or just leave them as general. Uh, I suppose I should leave them as general, uh, so let's try. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have A, B here, okay, and we're going to have a function which is a very simple function. It's going to basically uh, be zero on part of this it then needs to step up to 1. It needs to have a straight line connecting it up to 1. So we'll put 1 up here. And then it needs to go off and just remain 1 until you get to B. And we're gradually going to make this slope steeper, basically. And this is the problem with A and B being general, because it becomes a bit more difficult. Uh, so uh, the distantly... Sorry, the... Um, well, the uh, length of this interval, or as we know, is b minus a. So let's divide this interval up into three pieces, okay? So we're going to have one piece, piece one, uh, where the function is just going to be zero from a to that end of the first piece. Then we're going to have this piece two, where it's going to rise uniformly up to one. Uh, and then we're going to have piece three, where it's going to remain at one continuously, okay? Um, actually, I suppose that's not quite what I want to do here, because I want to change the steepness of this line, and having it uniform like that isn't going to work. Uh, so uh, we're going to have to make this gradually smaller, basically. So how am I going to do that? Uh, we're going to have to extend these bits um, inwards, basically. Um, so we can start off with our first function as being this one, uh, where each of these three pieces is equally equal in size, basically. Uh, and then we can gradually make this steeper. Okay, so let's start with this one. Let's make our first function in the sequence, this function where, uh, so we'll make f1 of x, this function where you are 0 on uh, this first bit, which is a to a plus b minus a over 3, because I want each of these intervals initially to be the same size. Uh, so we'll make it equal to 0 uh, on uh, the interval a to a plus a minus, uh, sorry, b minus a over 3. So basically, that is uh, saying that it should be 0 on this portion of the interval a, b here. Okay, so that's that bit. Then what we want is it to rise uniformly on here, right? How can we do that? Uh, so uh, the, if we want to make a straight line uh, rise, uh, we want to make it go to 1, uh, so what's the gradient of this going to be? So the gradient is going to be the change in y over the change in x. In this case, the change in y, we know, is going to be 1. And we also know the change in x, it's going to be b minus a over 3. And this is why it becomes difficult keeping it general. Uh, the notation is going to become more, um, more cumbersome. So we put over b minus a over 3, which is our delta x. Um, so that's going to be our gradient. So if we just simplify that, that's 3 over b minus a. Okay, uh, so that's going to be our gradient, and we also want it to go through the point. Um, this point is a plus b minus uh, a over 3. So this is a plus b minus a over 3. And we want it to go through that point. Uh, you know, we want it to ascribe that value of x. We want it to ascribe 0. So if we take the general equation of a general straight line, it's y is equal to mx plus c. If we stick in 0 here, Oh, sorry, no, we're going to have to stick in 0 here because the y value is 0, not the x value. So we'll stick in 0 there. And we stick in our x value, uh, a plus b minus a over, f uh, a over 3, then what we can do is solve for our c, basically. So we know that our gradient is this, so let's stick that in, 3 over b minus a, 
x and we want to solve for c and we know that y is going to equal 0 when x is equal to this value so we'll stick that in 3 over b minus a is this still in view? Uh, yes ok right so 3 minus over b minus a and then we're going to multiply that by our x value which is a plus b minus a over 3 OK, and then we'll add on C. So we get that C is going to equal uh, the negative of this thing. So if we uh, try and simplify this down a bit, we'll multiply this out and we'll get um, minus, I'll put it out the front, and then we get 3A over B minus A. And then the B minus A's cancel here and the 3's cancel as well, so you get plus 1. So we get that C is going to equal 1 minus 3A over B minus A, basically. OK, uh, so if we plug that back into our equation, that is going to be our equation on the interval a plus b minus a over 3 to a plus 2b minus a over 3. So uh, we want our equation to be, um, we want our value to be at 3 over b minus a x plus uh, 1 minus 3a over b minus a on the interval, that's going to be our interval on the interval um, x is an element of, and this is a plus b minus a over 3 to a plus uh, 2b minus a over 3. Okay, and we'll cut it there and continue in the next video.